Okay, so here's another quirky little MIDI tip, tip, one that's good for processing incoming MIDI and also for um, deforming and controlling uh, MIDI messages from external sources that are also passing out to external destinations. Now I've got my 505 set up here again, uh, purely to have somewhere for MIDI notes to come in. If I launch the 505 here, you can see here the MIDI notes coming in, which is great. Now say I want to send those MIDI notes instead of to a drum machine to an external synth. So I'm going to load up an external instrument and I'm going to send those notes to the peak and I'm bringing the audio back in and let's have a quick listen to that pattern now. Okay, great. Um, nothing particularly amazing about that. Now, what you might want to be able to do is to deform or manipulate or change that MIDI information in some way. Now, the problem being that if I draw in a clip here and I create an envelope, say a really simple envelope such as pitch bend here, and I draw in a really gentle bend over this bar, we would expect to hear something happening when we play this clip alongside the incoming MIDI. Unfortunately, we don't. And the reason for that is because, because this track is set to monitor in, the MIDI is coming directly through it. It's not in any way coming from any clips contained within here. And so none of this automation is making any difference. Now, interestingly, if we set up a second MIDI track and we move our peak instrument over to its own MIDI track, we can still receive the MIDI on this track from any destination we like. So we're just going to set it to all ins for the time being. And then we can also send MIDI from this track to any destination we like. So if we also send MIDI from here to the peak and we set this on auto so that the MIDI information, although there's no notes in here, there is automation. So this automation information is also being sent to the peak. So we have two tracks here that are sending information independently. There's no need to feed one through the other as the peak will receive all the information that's coming to it. So now trigger the sequence on the 505. It will uh, begin playing notes on the peak. And when I trigger this automation clip here, you'll hear the automation also being sent to the peak, which will be changing that parameter, which is the pitch bend. This is really interesting because it enables us to apply lots of different variations to incoming MIDI. It also means that we can set this, our peak track, to receive input. So it could be potentially receiving MIDI information from um, anywhere live. It could be from another keyboard, from a drum pad or anywhere. And then those, that live input could then be manipulated through clips on a secondary track here. If you go into the envelopes, you can also select any of the other CC channels here. So I could change the modulation, for example. Put a nice, simple uh, sweep in for the modulation as well. And when combined with unlinked envelopes, so say I was to select envelope 29, which I know is Peak's filter cutoff control, and unlink this envelope, perhaps create an envelope that's eight bars long. Then I can create um, a really gentle swell for the filter on the peak. And then when I play my sequence, can apply those automations to that MIDI coming through. 